vast realm of nature's tapestry, where once roamed the majestic California golden bear, the graceful passenger pigeon, and the elusive Tasmanian tiger, now lies a silent void. These creatures, along with the Pinta Island tortoise and the vibrant golden toad have been forever extinguished from our world. The culprit responsible for this tragic loss is none other than ourselves. Deep within the walls of Francis's last cave, ancient art tells tales of humanity's earliest existence. The artwork depicts creatures of lore such as the woolly rhino, the colossal antlered Megacirrus elk, and the massive roaming oxen who once shared their existence with us. Alas, those cave walls now stand as solemn memorials, for those magnificent beings are no more. Extinction is a concept we have come to comprehend, for it is the fate that befalls a species when it breathes its last breath, departing from the realm of life and leaving behind only memories. Even children understand that some groups of living beings cease to exist. However, the idea of extinction is relatively modern. Back in the 1790s, a naturalist named George Cuvier, through the study of fossils, debunked the notion that they belonged to yet undiscovered creatures. He revealed that they were remnants of what he called lost species. Over time, scientists like Charles Lyell and Charles Darwin embraced the idea that geological processes, evolution, and even extinction occur at an imperceptibly slow pace. So gradual, in fact, that we rarely witness a species vanishing before our very eyes. Catastrophic change was deemed impossible. It wasn't until the 1980s that this perspective was shaken. Geologist Walter Alvarez was perplexed by the sudden disappearance of tiny aquatic fossils between two rock layers, dating back approximately 66 million years, the same age as the last dinosaurs. With the help of his Nobel Prize winning father, he analyzed the boundaries chemistry and discovered off the charts levels of iridium. This precious metal is uncommon in Earth's crust but abundant in asteroids. Alvarez proposed a theory. A massive asteroid around 10 kilometers wide collided with our planet, obliterating 75% of its plants and animals. Initially, scientists dismissed this idea, but it was finally validated in 1991 with the discovery of the Chicxulub crater near the Yucatan Peninsula. Every living being today is a descendant of the survivors of that cataclysmic event, the Cretaceous Paleogene mass extinction, the most recent of the Big Five. We should consider ourselves fortunate. Loving the video or learning something new? Smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe for more awesome content you won't want to miss. When we examine Earth's fossil records in their entirety, we find that a staggering 98% of all species that have ever existed are now extinct. However, their disappearance did not occur at a steady rate throughout the history of life on our planet. We have identified five distinct mass extinctions, where the majority of life at the time vanished in the blink of a geologic eye. Apart from the infamous dinosaur killing event, there were extinctions during the Triassic-Jurassic, Late Devonian, Ordovician Silurian, and the most catastrophic of all, the End Permian Extinction. This particular event, known as the Great Dying, eradicated up to 96% of Earth's species. Now, here's the alarming truth. We find ourselves in the midst of the sixth mass extinction, and this time, we are the cataclysm. The harsh reality of life indicates that even in times of relative stability, there exists a background rate of extinction among mammals. For example, we might anticipate one species going extinct every 700 years, or perhaps one amphibian per thousand years. However, current studies on extinction rates reveal that we have exceeded these estimates by approximately 1,000 times. In certain groups like amphibians, the rate of disappearance is a staggering 45,000 times faster than normal. Moreover, since there are countless species still unknown or unclassified, these figures likely underestimate the gravity of the situation. Farewell to the gastric brooding frog, the pygmy three-toed sloth, and the enigmatic clouded leopard. Oh, the friendships we could have forged. But how do we know that we are the culprits behind this devastation? Approximately 13,000 years ago, as the Earth emerged from its icy grip, 
our beloved and peculiar megafauna such as the woolly mammoth, the majestic saber-toothed cat, and our old acquaintance the megatherium, vanished from the face of the earth. Their demise was a consequence of both shifting climates and the advent of deadly hunting tools. If only we had preserved the awe-inspiring eight-foot-long beaver. What a sight it would have been. Throughout history, as humanity delved into hunting and agriculture, we unwittingly began altering ecosystems in subtle yet significant ways. However, since the onset of the Industrial Revolution, our impact has been magnified to unprecedented levels. With the exception of the first bacteria that oxygenated the atmosphere, no living entity has ever wielded such influence over life on Earth as we have. Consequently, scientists now refer to the current era as the Anthropocene, the age where we are the ultimate problem. With a global population of 7 billion, we relentlessly encroach upon critical habitats and disrupt the homes of countless species. We contribute to the warming of our planet and our reckless behavior in transporting species across vast distances further exacerbates the situation. A 2014 paper by Stuart Pym and Clinton Jenkins in Science unequivocally states that human population growth and increased consumption are the main drivers of the ongoing extinction crisis. However, these factors give rise to a host of additional threats. Climate change and habitat destruction loom as the most obvious perils. Studies have shown that the majority of land-dwelling species possess narrow ranges, rendering them incapable of relocating when their forests are decimated or transformed into barren wastelands. Oceanic species possess greater mobility, except for those residing within the delicate ecosystem of coral reefs. Yet, Due to the highest levels of atmospheric carbon dioxide in 800,000 years, the ocean's increasing acidity leaves organisms with calcium-based shells nowhere to flee or swim. If current trends persist and the ocean's pH reaches 7.8 by the end of this century, one-third of marine species could face annihilation. Invasive species also wreak havoc on fragile ecosystems. A prime example is Guam where a particular snake species inadvertently arrived via military cargo in the 1940s, leading to the extinction of native birds. Likewise, in Africa's Lake Victoria, the introduction of the Nile perch by fishermen resulted in the vanishing of hundreds of silverside fish species. Our endeavors are certainly commendable. Sadly, we are erasing species at a pace faster than we can even identify them. Over the past four decades, invertebrate populations, which constitute a staggering 97% of Earth's species, have plummeted by 45% worldwide, as revealed by Stanford's Rodolfo Dirzo. And these figures only represent the ones we are aware of. Our amphibian friends bear the brunt of our relentless onslaught. Having survived multiple mass extinctions over the span of 350 million years, they now face an unprecedented assault. This loss of animal life may bear the innocuous name of deanimation, but there is nothing endearing about it. Not a single group of living beings on our planet today is exempt from the current and impending threat of extinction. This includes us. Extinction stretches far beyond the realm of gorillas, tigers, polar bears, and rhinos, those charismatic and beloved creatures that captivate our hearts. While their preservation is undeniably crucial, we must also extend our concern to the unassuming beetles, the unattractive worms, and the slimy frogs. Every species, regardless of its size or apparent significance, from the mighty elephant to the humblest protozoan, is essential and worthy of salvation, even if we cannot fully comprehend their ecological roles. As the renowned naturalist John Muir once mused, when we attempt to isolate any entity, we discover that it is intertwined with a thousand invisible bonds, inseparable from the intricate web of the universe. While our understanding of the planet's ecosystems may be incomplete, our impact upon them knows no bounds. Perhaps the very tools and technologies that have pushed life on Earth to the precipice of oblivion can also empower us to reverse the tides and resurrect what has been lost. So what shall we do? Let us engage in dialogue down below, sharing our thoughts, ideas, and collective determination to safeguard the extraordinary diversity of life on this fragile planet. Stay curious, my friends. And if you enjoyed this video, 
Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more engaging content about science and the universe. Thanks for watching.